Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed coffee from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. Was sitting in a very beautiful palace and the ark of God was in a tent. Is that true? And David became concerned and he said, No, 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 no. I I cannot sit here in a beautiful palace where there is no house for my God. The 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 ark of God was in a tent. And he said, no, it's in my heart. I have to build a house for God. This is how much I love him and I honor him because he considered the goodness of God, the mercy of God over his life. And he said, I can't let this continue like this. And then he now discussed it with prophet Nathan. And he told Nathan, he said, this is what I intend to do. And Nathan said, this is good. Do whatever is in your heart for God is with you. Is that true? And so he made up his mind. That he was going to build God a house. And then the Lord sent prophet Nathan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's from verse 1 now. Um, so let's, let's, take a, let, let's, let's just read from verse, from verse 1. Please be patient with me. It's a bit long. Let's just take it. I was thinking of cutting somewhere so we'll save time. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, the king being David now. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Two. the king said unto nathan the prophet see now i dwell in a house of cedar but the ark of god dwelleth within curtains right verse three and nathan said unto the king go do all that is in thy heart for the lord is with you and it came to pass that night that the word of the lord came to nathan the prophet saying go and tell my servant david thus saith the lord shall thou build me a house to dwell in Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel from Egypt, even unto this day, but I have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake the word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, God is talking to Nathan, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thy enemies. Now, follow all the things that God did to David to help him to rise to become king. Number one, I took you and I lifted you. And I knew that every lifting comes with enemies. So I went with you and I cut off your enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name. May this happen to someone. Everything written here in the name of Jesus Christ. I just felt to stop and declare over you that the same way God took David from the backside. And look at this is God. God remembers how he lifts men. It's only men that forget how they are lifted. God himself is telling a prophet, I'm not confused as to how I lifted him. From the sheep coat, I took you and made you a ruler over God's people. Let me speak to someone here. You may be the least in your life, your family, your destiny. But in the name of Jesus here at this conference, I declare that God who lifted David, the one who shows men mercy and kindness, may he lift you to become ruler over much. I hope you are really receiving it. And then he says, I was with you. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you understand when he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. The cure for fear is divine presence. Sometimes you don't need the storm to be calm for you to be at peace. Just verify whether Jesus is in the boat. And then he says, I have cut off all your enemies out of your sight. And I made thee a great name. Like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Verse 10. Moreover, 
I will appoint a place for my people Israel and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. 11. It says, and, and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all your enemies, also the Lord telleth thee, that I will make thee a house. My goodness. Do you know what he was saying? He said, David, you want to build me a house? And he laughed. It's like a little boy coming to meet a rich man with maybe a little lollipop and says, I want to bless you. And then the man says, you mean I want to take this? And he says, because you are doing this, me too, I want to do something. You understand what is going on there now? And I will establish, he says, and when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with your fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Next verse, we're reading. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Let's read to 16. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, watch this. Because as kings, when you default, you are gone. That's what happened to Samuel, to Saul. Now he says, because I'm introducing something that binds me and you. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy... My mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. Whom I put away before thee. 16. It says, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Go and tell David. Thus saith the Lord. Nathan goes to meet David. And says, David, I don't know what happened between you and God. But right now there is a word from God. God has brought this that no matter what you do, I may punish you, I may allow men to afflict you. But as far as replacing you and bringing you out of relevance, it is no longer there. That every time I have bound myself with you, that as far as your relevance and your dominion and your rising and remaining is concerned, there is nothing you can do. Provided you have made up your mind to honor me this much, I'm now reciprocating. So blind Bartimius, knowing he was in trouble, he had been hearing that discussion from sermons. He now said, Jesus, if I call you the seed of Abraham, you will think what I need is arms. But right now, I'm tired of this condition. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know what my father did wrong. But remember... You are a seed of David. I, I, mercy, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, stop, stop, stop. Somebody is saying something here that I cannot ignore. Mr. Man, you are blind, but who taught you this? All I know is that you are the son of David. A covenant was made that from David and his seed, God is going to create a platform for dealing with men that will be beyond what they can do or what they cannot do. Are you not that seed? He never asked blind Bartimaeus, do you have faith? Read it. Everybody he spoke to, he required faith. But the moment a man said, son of David, he said, leave it. I don't care whether you believe in me or not. There is a covenant that commits my integrity. The only people who are not asked for faith are dead people. You don't ask a dead man, do you have faith? And now he looks at a man who says, I know you are the son of David. I may not know much, but this I know about you. You keep covenants. I'm here. There were not many people that said things that struck Jesus in the Bible. One of them was a centurion. He showed him the power of authority. And he said... I am a man also under authority. And because of the authority that I represent, I can tell one, go and he will go. I can tell one, come and he will come. I can tell one, do this and he will do. Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. 
I don't want to insult you. I recognize your authority. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, who taught you this? I have not found this faith. Not in Israel. Now a beggar who is blind surprises Jesus by saying, Jesus, you are the son of David. Have mercy on me. What exactly is the covenant of mercy that God entered with David? You see, the idea of mercy there, most, I, I, and, I, and I, I love your pastor because he's, I think he's one of the few men of God I know who has really stretched the subject of mercy, helping the body of Christ understand the mercy of God. I have told you again and again that the mercy of God is not just limited to sinners. The mercy of God is a platform for relationship. You see that so when the bible talks about the sure mercies of david he's talking about a covenant a covenant that came through and from the desire of a man to see jesus lifted david knew that one day jesus was going to come he didn't know he would be called jesus the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies he knew and he did not know that he would participate to make that happen. The star that represents the flag of Israel today is not called the star of Abraham. It's not even called the star of Jacob. And Isaac is called the star of David. Because there was a covenant. You will never lack dominion. You will never lack the sight of mercy within your family within your time i will raise up your seed that seed was not just solomon because solomon did a lot of things when you read the bible you will see solomon started well but towards the end of his life he married all kinds of women he did all sorts of things as at the time theologically speaking as at the time solomon was writing the book of ecclesiastes it was said that he had written as a fallen man Everything my eyes saw, I desired. Solomon is confessing. You see that kind of man. And because of that, he caused the kingdom to be torn into two. You see that? But the God of heaven who keeps covenants. Remember what I taught you about relationships? It was not just emotions. It was not just by reason. It was by covenant. He bound himself that David, as far as your relevance is concerned, you will never go out of place and i connect something eternal to you the covenant of david is one of the platforms i hope you know i hope that we'll be able to deal with that if if, if, if there is a time the salvation of men rode upon certain covenants it didn't just happen there had to be legitimate grounds upon which jesus would die for people one of it for instance is the covenant that God had with Abraham. Jesus came as a fulfillment of scripture. If he was Messiah, then there would have to be certain things that he came to fulfill. Are we together now? So there had to be certain covenants in place to be able to allow Jesus die. Legally. One of it was the covenant that he had with Abraham. That in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Otherwise, we will have the right to say, Jesus, who gave you the authority to die for the whole world? Where did you get that authority from? Because even though you are God, you've now passed through the womb of a woman. So you are man also. What makes you believe that you have the power? That covenant indeed. So he came and identified himself as the seed of Abraham, the Bible says. Even though Abraham had a physical seed, Isaac, but the real seed that was talked about Paul explained it in his Pauline epistles that it was Jesus. And the Bible says now we are being grafted into Christ. That every time we believe the gospel, we also are grafted into that seed. It now gives us the authority to say we can be blessings also to the world. I can know that I can bless the world today. Not just because I'm a preacher. Because number one, I am grafted to Christ who came and grafted himself into this abrahamic covenant now same with david what is the basis of our obtaining mercy because number one we have been grafted into christ who came to honor the covenant that he had with david
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.